Hey WildTube family, day two at Miller here in Wisconsin. Here's Resendo today. And today we're testing out Miller's induction heating system. We got some six inch skid 80 chrome. Uh, we're gonna be heating it up. We're gonna run the route with RMD. What do you figure? Pancakes on top. Exactly. Some pancakes on top, exactly. Warning. Read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. So today we got Al Sherrill. He's a uh, Miller induction specialist. You want to show us how to set this up here, Al? Sure. What we're going to do is we're using one of our induction heaters called the Arc Reach heater. And we have several different tools you can use for preheating this style of pipe. But what we're doing today is an in position process. We're going to use one of our quick wrap tools. The quick wrap tools is one of our new developments that makes using induction coils really easy on pipe 10 inches and smaller. All you have to do with these is you wrap them around the area you want to heat and you clip them together down at the base. Once I've got that in position, I've got a cinch pin here, or a cinch collar, and bam, you're done setting up on one side. And that's number one side. I got a second tool we'll put on the other side. So this coil, I can go up to 450 degrees without any insulation underneath it. Typically for nine chrome, you wanna be 400 at the joint yeah. the whole time. So I'll be heating up the heated zone a little bit higher yeah. so we can drive the heat into the, into the joint. So once I've got the tools on, the next thing I wanna do is plug these tools into my output extension or connect up to both sides of this connector box, all right? And you'll notice that I'm keeping these leads together. These place together nice. If you need help keeping them together, it sort of helps reduce generating heat or wasting heat. I'm gonna put a couple of twists in it. So that's all there is to connecting that up. The next thing we need to do is we need to let the machine know what the temperature of the metal is. So we use thermocouples, all right? So thermocouple is an old technology and it's just got a sensor. There's a couple pair of wire in here. So what we wanna do, the heat is being generated right where these tools are. And I wanna place the tip of this right in the middle of that heated area. So you can get an idea of the distance and I can just shove it under there. So we just wanna get the heated area up to a temperature that's above the temperature we need here to push that heat in here. So since we're going for 400 here, we'll heat this up to 450. And then when we're ready to start welding, we'll just back it off a little bit so you have room to weld around it and it'll maintain, it'll keep pushing heat in there to maintain that 400 degrees. I mean, that was, what, five minutes, not even? Oh, I don't even think that so much. that's a quick setup. And that's, that's me talking about it. Really, if you aren't talking about it, you can have this set up in a couple of minutes so and ready see, to go. Let's get this machine up to temperature then and let's, let's start baking it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get some heat on. So you'll see over on the machine, very simple to set up. It comes up and I just got to plug in the thermocouples that I need. I can use up to six thermocouples and if I wanted to add more, I'd want to put them in the control loop and I can go in here and manage that, turn thermocouples on and off for the machine. So it uses them when it's thinking about how much output to give. I've already got number one and number, turned, number two turned on to control. And now I just need to tell it what temperature I want to heat to. So I want that heated zone again to be like 50 or 30 degrees higher than what the joint is. So since we're going for 400, I'm going to go up to about 440. So I'm just going to hit the up button. I'm at 440. That's it for setup. I can just hit run now. We can run the heater. You can see that the blue light's on and you can see our heat starting to rise. So if we take a look, we can see this is already heated up a good 70, 80 degrees in the couple of seconds we've been talking here, right? So that took, what, 20 seconds for it to heat up 70 degrees. And the cool thing about induction is that while this heating is going on, nothing here is hot to the touch, all right? So whenever we're generating this, again, there's magnetic fields going around this cable that's generating the electricity inside the part. And here are the parts still perfectly room temperature, the same way it was. But you get closer to that coil and you can feel that heat starting to spread out and soak out into the material. So you can feel that temperature starting to come up. So yeah, you give it a little bit of time. Yeah. You can see we're already up to 250 degrees. So meanwhile, you can be getting your weld torch or your equipment ready. And by the time you're ready to go over here with your weld stuff, this is probably going to be pretty close to temperature already. We're seven minutes in. We're, what are we at here for temperature? Well, right if I look zone. with the infrared, you can see that we're about 439 degrees. So again, we're heating these zones up to 450. The infrared's telling me the sides there are, are at about 440. I got a crayon here. We can just confirm that it's given me the melt. So you can see that's melting real nice. So we're well over the 400 degree limit of the stick. 
and we're ready to weld now. We feather our tack, so we're feathering as we're going. So we are gonna go downhill. Our wire ski is set up at 175. Gap is about a 532nd, land 332. You know, for being a 9% chrome wire, this runs uh, it's a similar technique as we did the uh, carbon 70S6 wire. Uh, same process, and really it eliminates the purge makes it a quicker process. Travel downhill, a little bit less heat input. It's a pretty cool process here. Yeah, it's really, really nice and easy. All, all I'm doing is just following my photo, going side to side. It, really, there's not much of a difference in performance or anything versus the, uh, the carbon steel wire. A very, uh, little subtle difference, but very similar. It's very smooth, very, yeah, very for similar. Being, for being 9% chrome, let me get that sluggishness to it. Oh yeah. Doesn't want to flow out, and I mean. Come out good. Yeah. Perfect. So no purge, none of that. Easy process, right? It doesn't take that long. Yeah, so, yeah, so we are doing, uh, it, it is like mid. We are going downhill. No purge is required here. So it's, it's, huge yeah, that's a, it's a big deal right here. So you don't have to purge. And all you're going to do is just follow your photos just like regular carbon. We're doing 9% chrome, so it's P91 wire. This is RMB chrome. Like normally this is a TIG process. All right, Dakota, so what do you think about it? I know you're well, watching the cup right now. You're dragging it inside. That's your mean, favorite, is that your favorite technique? Yeah, but when I ran RMB, I kind of got used to this. and. You know, it's for being chrome, it runs really nice. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in a process like this, you can either walk the tuck, you can freehand it, it doesn't matter how you do it. Because I freehanded the top to get that little bit more movement. Oh yeah. Then down on the side and you got gravity working with you, you just kind of transition in and if it works, just keep going like that, so. It's a smooth ride, That's yeah. Pretty sweet. So, in my past experience with chrome, it was all, all TIG roots we did. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I really, uh, it's kind of a crucial part of rooting, is having that, like, you know, you talked about right. the bluing on your, on your uh, feathering. feathering. Mm -hmm. I noticed with chrome, having that longer ramp, thinning it out nice and slow, being a little bit sluggish, more sluggish of a material, it really helps catching your tie-ins. Mm -hmm. So, taking that time, doing the feathering right, yeah, make, make sure that you're grinding enough so you can exactly. break into your walls. You don't want to have that lack of fusion inside your roof. All I'm doing here is going side to side, side to side. You don't want to go too fast. You want to make sure that you're breaking through your walls. Follow your puddle. Make sure that you have proper angle the whole time. Clip this wire. All right, well, your side's closed up. Time to close up my side. All right. Yeah, I'm having this nice long ramp gives your puddle that time to heat up, turn those edges away, tie in, and it's good to go onto your rescue route. Also, ladies and gentlemen, good practice is you always want to do your root in quarters. Always do it in quarters. That way your pipe won't pull one direction. Always good practice. Always remember that when you're about to tie in, you never want to rush anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. We just did some downhill with Chrome using P91. So we were welding on a six inch schedule 80. Everything was downhill. We just did the root pass. Came out great. Easy process, very simple to operate. Stand by for next video. You don't want to miss out. All right, thank you guys. See you next time. Ooh, rah.